Hi, I'm John Schreiber. For over 17 seasons, the New Jersey Performing Arts Center has been the state's premier home for both world-class and community-based performances. We pride ourselves on presenting something for everyone. That's why we're very proud to partner with the Caucus Educational Corporation to produce one-on-one -on -one with Steve Adubato at NJPAC. This special series features some of the very best talent New Jersey has produced. We're pleased to welcome them and you to the Arts Center. Funding for this edition of One on One with Steve Adubato at NJPAC has been provided by the law firm of Gibbons PC, Barnabas Health, TD Bank, Verizon Communications, New Jersey Manufacturers Insurance Group, Auto Insurance, Homeowners Insurance, and Banking under the principle of stewardship, Josh S. Weston, and by NJ Best, New Jersey's 529 College Savings Plan. Turn a dream into a degree. This is One on One. When you first heard that they were doing Charlie Rose and Gail King, didn't you go, what? People like laughing at others, so I don't mind if the other is me. You see, you go you right into the character. That's what it is. <laughs> I'm bringing families together a half an hour each week. I mean, I'm doing something special. And so I do feel successful. This is One on One at NJ Pack. It is our honor to welcome our partner and colleague, John Schreiber, who's the president and CEO here at NJPAC. John, we are back yes. for a series of wonderful programs. We did conversations at NJPAC, and right. we've rebranded, if you will, in connection with our series, uh, our late night series, one-on-one, right. -on -one, right? Right, good, good. Let's talk about some of the people we have here, some of the terrific people. Let's talk about Christian McBride, who's actually on this show. Ah, uh, he's the best. I think uh, it, is, it is a fact that he is the preeminent jazz bass player in the universe today. And uh, the public agrees, the critics agree. Um, he can play with anybody. Um, he is NJPEX jazz advisor, mm -hmm. so he informs uh, a lot of the, the bookings that we do here. You know, we have a 25 concert jazz season uh, this year, including the T.D. James Moody uh, Democracy of Jazz Festival. That's big. And Christian is all over it. And um, the beauty part is that I met him when he was 14 years old. Yeah, and you uh, are. In Philadelphia. And your love for jazz is well known. Yeah. Let's do this. Switching over from jazz. By the way, Darth Ann Kirk over at WBGO Partnership there. Real quick before we talk about the New Jersey Symphony Orchestra. World's greatest jazz radio station across the street. Right. Right. right? Beloved in our region and all over the universe uh, through the Internet. Um, Darth Ann has been there since the station opened. Um, again, I'm going to tell you how old I am. I met her about 38 years ago at Kennedy Airport when she was with Rassan, about to go to Europe, and mm -hmm. I was a road manager for, for her. And, uh, and she's Newark's first lady of jazz. So uh, she does a brunch series here six times a year. She does the Jazz Vespers at Bethany Baptist Church. Um, she is the heart of the jazz community. There is so much going on here in the city of Newark. We are in the heart of downtown Newark at the New Jersey Performing Arts Center. Uh, the other partnership you have I want to talk about um, yeah. is with the New Jersey Symphony Orchestra. We have Jim yes. Rowe, the president and CEO. Yes. New guy, series. former uh, uh, oboist, principal oboist with the symphony. Performer to executive. Performer to, <laughs> exactly, performer to administrator, right. And, you know something uh, about that? Uh, no, I don't know anything about that. But uh, <laughs> but but he's a you'll you you've met him, you know him a bit. He is a lovely guy, great spirit, and uh, you know the symphony performs here at NJPAC thirty times a year. And Jacques Lacombe, the wonderful maestro, said to me in Prudential Hall, which is acoustically superb, uh, a good orchestra sounds great, and a great orchestra sounds spectacular. So. Mm -hmm. We're really proud that this great orchestra is uh, such a regular visitor to our theater. Two performers. You see our logo one-on-one -on -one yep. right here at NJPAC. At NJPAC, there's some extraordinary performers uh, coming in. Let's talk about Terry Lynn Carrington, Grammy Award-winning drummer, composer, right? Yes, and she will be with uh, Esmeralda Spaulding, the remarkable uh, female bassist. Um, uh, and um, uh, that's a show that Christian is producing. Christian McBride. Christian McBride will be producing, and Questlove will be on that show as well, and it's a, a real kind of genre-bending program because it's jazz meets funk, and, uh, and, and what wonderful, one of the wonderful things about Christian is he can sort of cross genres seamlessly. One more. Steve, is it Torre? Steve Turay, yeah. Turay, Steve Turay, Saturday Night Live band since 1984, yes, right? Yes. And it's connected to Darth Ann's place. Yes. Make the connection there. Yeah. 
Well, Steve Ture is a Montclair resident, right? Uh, like Our you, town. like you, like me, right? right? Center of the universe, right? <laughs> yeah, right. Other than Newark. Yeah, other than <laughs> Newark, and um, and he plays the trombone, of course, and he also plays the shells better than anybody, and he's so much fun and a really swell guy, and this is going to be his group, and he's going to get to sort of wail um, as a leader. You know, mm. when you're in the Saturday Night Live band, you're one of many great musicians, but here he's the head of the class. So. Before I let you out of here. I said before, we're in the heart of downtown Newark. Yeah. NJ Pack, our partner for one-on-one. Yeah. On one. Yep. Why are you so uh, optimistic, bullish here on the city? Well, I mean, the city is at this amazing tipping point, right? You know, I was at the, 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 the uh, ribbon cutting for a Whole Foods that's going to be uh, across Military mm -hmm. Park. I mean, can you imagine, you know, a Whole Foods uh, right here Big in deal. the middle of Newark, right? You know, we're going to be... God willing, building a 22-story residential tower across the street here. Shaquille O'Neal's building a 21-story residential tower uh, uh, the street over from us. Yeah. Prudential's building a headquarters down the street. Panasonic's Panasonic the just opened right? a headquarters <laughs> down the street. <laughs> Military Park is being refurbished. I mean, it's all happening, yeah. and it's all happening now. It's taken a long time, but it's happening. And finally, NJ Pack is very much involved in public broadcasting, and we're proud to be part yeah. of this, John. Uh, likewise, likewise. We'll we're, be back we're, we're again thrilled. and again along with our partners at WNET and NJTV. And, uh, thank you, John. Makes me feel good. Thank you. Thank you, buddy. Okay. This is a great series. One-on-one. -on -one, right here at the place you want to be. NJ Pack will be back after this. If you would like more information on this program or if you'd like to express an opinion, email us at info at caucusnj.org. Visit us online at caucusnj.org. Or find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash Steve Adubato, Ph.D. There he is, Christian McBride, three-time Grammy Award winner, bassist, composer, arranger, educator, all-around great guy. How you doing? Doing well, thanks. Thank you for uh, honoring us one-on-one -on -one here at NJPEG. You like this place, NJPEG, right? I do. <laughs> You're connected here, aren't you? Quite. Explain it. Well, uh, John Schreiber, who was the uh, CEO of NJPAC, is Just talk a, to him. Good guy. Yeah, you know, he's a wonderful, wonderful man. I, I've known him since I was 14 years old. Uh, he, when he was working for Festival Productions in the 1980s, and uh, he hired me as NJPAC's jazz advisor, and I'm also the uh, artistic director of the Moody uh, Jazz, jazz Festival. Yeah, James Moody. And uh, so I get to do a lot of great <laughs> things around here. Where did your love for jazz come from? When did it happen? It comes from my family. Uh, I come from a family of, of musicians and people in the uh, music industry. Uh, my father, Lee Smith, is a bass player. My great uncle, Howard Cooper, is also a bass player. Uh, my uncle, Tony McBride, he was a promotions man at WHAT Radio in, in Philadelphia. And uh, basically, I, I grew up listening to all of this great music all across the board, jazz, rhythm and blues, gospel, mm. classical music. And uh, my, between my mother and all of my uncles, I went to a lot of live shows growing up. And uh, of course, Philadelphia is such a great city with such a rich history of, of musicians. Uh, one day, my great uncle, my uncle Howard, he gave me a stack of records to listen to, and the record that really changed my life was uh, Charlie Parker and Dizzy Gillespie. It was called Jazz at Massey Hall. Jazz at? Massey Hall. In what was it about it? Because when I heard this record, it was 1983, and that record was recorded in 1953. Mm. And I just remember thinking, well, the energy is still just as uh, palpable as, like, say, a Michael Jackson record, you know, because... Uh, you could hear Dizzy Gillespie, who was like one of the greatest personalities that jazz has ever had. Uh, not only was his music very serious, but when you saw him perform, he, he was such a, a showman. He was always having such a good time on stage. You would almost uh, take for granted this serious stuff that he was putting down. So uh, this the joy, the passion, the energy that came from that recording, that, that really made me fall in love with jazz. Now, you got, I just said to you, you know, it's an opportunity for us to feature here at NJPAC um, some of the great performers here, some of, the, um, some of the music that people don't get to hear an awful lot. But I said, let's talk about your new CD. And it's like, there are two CDs out at the same time. I said, there's music people, right? People music. Excuse me, people yeah, music, yeah. Christian McBride and Inside Straight. But there's also out there. Here. Out, out, I'll get this right. <laughs> out here. This happened just about at the same time. 
So yeah. out here and people music happened just about at the same time? Yeah, I actually recorded both CDs roughly at the same time. As a matter of fact, when I, when I, had my, when I was recording the trio CD out here, I called the guys from Inside Straight. I said, hey, we got like a two hour window. Come in and knock out a couple of tracks. And Inside Straight. Yeah, with, with the, the guys were inside straight. Uh, the guys who were in the trio, Christian Sands and Ulysses Owens, they also played on a couple of tracks on the Inside Straight CD. So let me get this, let me get this straight, if I could, yeah, about Inside Straight. I think I know where you're going. It, it, Is there a confused. small group of <laughs> musicians who you wind up having very close relationships with and work on and collaborate in a lot of different ways? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Well, you know, there's a joke that Jazz, like the entire <laughs> genre, is actually just one big band with all interchangeable parts. Is there's that true? No, there's no exclusivity in jazz. There's, there's not enough musicians to to make that happen. You know, I mean, or or or, or I should say maybe the the demand is not such where you can have exclusivity. Whoa, whoa, what do you mean the demand? If someone were to say, because today at NJ Pack we're taping a lot of different shows in yeah. one day, and many of those folks that we're talking to, many of the folks we're talking to are connected to jazz. Mm -hmm. And you got the James Moody Festival here right. in NJPAC. But jazz is not, would you say it's mainstream? Mainstream in the sense that it's part of American pop culture? Yes. No, no. Is it, it important that it becomes that to you? I, I, I wonder about that sometimes. I'm not sure if I would ever want, it, I, I think if jazz became part of American pop culture, um, it's, uh, it, it would be compromised, or it could be in danger of being compromised. Because one what of the joys mean, of play, because one of the joys of playing jazz is that it's strictly driven by the art, whereas uh, a lot of things in American pop culture is not driven by the art. It's How driven dare by, you? It's, dri it's driven by the commerce. How dare you say that? <laughs> <laughs> because you know I'm right. <laughs> How dare, talking to us in broadcasting, how dare well, you say I mean, such so, a <laughs> so, so that's a delicate... Yeah, I don't know if I would want, like, you know, the TMZ film crew <laughs> following us around at the Village Vanguard. You know what I mean? You're a purist on some level. On some level. Because uh, you, uh, you got to pay bills. Hello. <laughs> and how do you... So, so, okay, you got the two CDs out at the same time. So here's my question. How challenging is it to get it out to the market? Mm -hmm. And who is that market for Christian McBride? Well, certainly, uh, well, if you're asking me personally, I, I think I have um, managed to build up a following of people in all kinds of different musical worlds because of my associations with people like Sting and Queen Latifah and, and The Roots and James Brown, but also I have my hardcore uh, jazz followers. And I, I'm a firm believer in doing exactly what it is that you love. If you do what you love, the people will come to you. You will find out who really is digging what you do, and mm -hmm. then they will follow you. You know, it's interesting. You talk about um, the connection with Sting mm -hmm. and Queen Latifah and others, James Brown. You really do. While you're a jazz aficionado on some level, clearly, obviously, yeah. you have moved into other musical genres. Someone like Sting that some of us just, just have loved for a long time. Did he get you right away? Did he understand you right away? I think so. Uh, you know, Sting is such a uh, serious musician. Again, he's one of these people who he's purely driven, at least I, I believe he's always been purely driven by music. I mean, he certainly understands the business of music. He understands a little bit about commerce, wouldn't you say? Oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> but uh, he never lets that become the dominant force in what he does musically. And uh, he's always calling great musicians to come and work with him. I've always admired that about him. He, he, uh, he's not afraid to call musicians who are going to challenge him, mm. you know. Uh, and that, that's rare in someone who's extremely famous like that, you know. So, and not to mention, we both play the same instrument. So when I first got the call from him, I was actually pretty surprised. I say he's, like, he's calling a bass player to play bass for his band in which he plays bass. <laughs> wow, this is interesting. And but what was that like? It was fantastic. You know, we, we, he's a wonderful person to be around. Uh, I've worked with him on and off now for about the last 12 years. Mm. I've recorded uh, two or three, two CDs with him. And uh, he's, he's on my CD that came out before out here. Before People, People Music. Music. Yeah, it was called Conversations with Christian. And uh, Sting is on that. So he, he's a wonderful musician and a wonderful person. Give me 30 seconds on Queen Latifah from right here in Newark, Brick yeah. City. 
oh my gosh, she is like the coolest person in the world. And she's so, she, she's uber talented, you know, and somebody that talented, uh, it's hard to believe she's as wonderful and sweet and as cool as she is. I loved working with her. Give me something on Jazz House Kids, because being in Montclair, being neighbors in Montclair, yes. um, while it comes out of there, it has a great impact well beyond the town. Yeah. Well, it was so wonderful. You, you interviewed my wife, who was the founder of Jazz House Kids, Terrific. Melissa Walker, and uh, what she's been able to do. See, I, I feel bad taking any sort of credit whatsoever because she really has done such a wonderful job with Jazz House Kids. I mean... She lives and breathes Jazz House Kids. She had that going when we first met, you know, a, a decade, you know, 10 years ago. And uh, I think what the organization is doing for these fantastic young musicians in the area is just is so inspiring. Mm. And, and we, we need an organization like Jazz House Kids because uh, public schools used to have music programs where we didn't need a, an organization like Jazz now House Kids. Now we need Jazz now House Kids. Now we need it. Yep. Hey, are you going to be performing for us? Yes. What are you going to be doing? Uh, I think I'm going to play an original composition of mine I wrote for my dear friend. His name is Ron Blake, a uh, great saxophonist, and the name of the song is Shaken Blake. Shaken Blake. Do you mind one more time if I plug the CDs and get it right this Do time? Do I mind? <laughs> People Music. People Music. Christian McBride and Inside Straight. Those are yep. your partners, right? And also Out Here, as opposed to Out There, because you, you are right here in the house at NJ Peck. <laughs> Christian, right. it is an honor to have you with us. It's such a pleasure to be here with you, Steve. Ready to play some music? Yes. Let's I'm ready. do it. Let's do it. Okay. If you would like more information on this program or if you'd like to express an opinion, email us at info at caucusnj.org. Visit us online at caucusnj.org or find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash Steve Adubato, Ph.D. There she is, Darth Ann Kirk, Newark's First Lady of Jazz, Special Events and Community Relations Coordinator at Newark's Public Radio Station, WBGO Jazz 88.3 FM. How are you doing? I'm doing great, thank you. How does it feel to be Newark's first lady of jazz? I'm not sure. John <laughs> Schreiber calls me that. 
think it's something I have to live up to the expectations. Yeah, and by the way, we are here one-on-one, -on -one, right here at NJPAC. Yes. But it's great having this place here. It's great having WBGO right next door. But tell us your story, because it's interesting how you got to this city. You weren't born and raised here. No. Come from Texas? Yes, Houston. Jazz big out there? At that time, when I lived there, it was. That was the music of the day, much like hip hop is now. That's what we did. But then you go to LA. Yes. Describe that. What's your connection there? Because it's, it's not just you goes out there. When I graduated high school, I went to LA to go to college. People from Texas tend to go to Los Angeles. And so that's what took me there. But your love for jazz, describe it. When did it happen? When did you know? I think I knew after I met Rasan Roland Kirk, because as I said before, growing up, that was the music of the day. Tell it's, folks who it's, it's Rasan. Oh, they Ra described that. I don't want to assume. <laughs> Rasan Roland Kirk is now deceased. He was a multi instrumentalist. He played 45 of the reed instruments and and he played three horns at one time in harmony which he never was quite able to outlive the fact that it was a gimmick but if you ask any of the musicians it was not a gimmick he pulled you in you loved it yes after after meeting him and and traveling on the road and being around it all of the time, I learned to have more of an appreciation for it and I started knowing who played with whom and mm. how long, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And then you just get involved. Some of it almost was like osmosis. It just rubbed off on you, just being around it. You think you were born to love jazz, to teach about jazz, to, to, to be an ambassador of jazz? You think you were born to do that? I think so, because most of the things that I've done in jazz, it wasn't like I went after it. It seems that all of this has just come to me. I guess you might say being in the right place at the right time, knowing the right people or whatever, because honestly, I didn't go after any of the things that I do. Well, describe the WBGO connection for those who don't know. WBGO, Jazz 88.3 FM, is the premier jazz station, I'm not just gonna say in this region, in the New York, New Jersey metropolitan region, but some of us believe in the country. Uh, we've been partners with them for a long time. It's part of the public broadcasting operation, public radio system. <clears throat> You've been an institution there from day one, a founding uh -huh. member, right? Yes. Talk about the jazz initiatives there and your involvement. Okay, WBGO was started founded by a young man who once lived in Newark and went to Rutgers by the name of Bob Ottenhoff. Great man. Yes, absolutely. I'm still in touch with him today. He knew a friend of mine, Steve Robinson, who worked in public radio in Boston at the time. I'm going back to 1978 after Rasan died. Rasan died December 5th, 1977. Mm. Steve Robinson, who is a huge idea person, said to me, well, what are you going to do since Rasan's dead? I said, I don't know. And so then he told me about this friend of his that was starting this radio station. He thought he should hire me. I told Steve, I know nothing <laughs> about radio. And so he said, you, but you have knew about jazz. Other, I knew about jazz. <clears throat> and so he told Bob, Bob said, okay, the rest is history. And I might say at that time, they were both in their late 20s, right. like 28, maybe 29. And so the rest is kind of history. That's how I came to work at WBG. And the connection with uh, John Schreiber and Jay Pack. I met John Schreiber, as I said, at one of the brunches last year when he was a very young person and I was younger. I met John when he worked for George Wien for Festival Productions. 
We lost contact for a little while after he left George Wing, but then we have reconnected. And, and you're really excited about the possibilities for continuing to teach, to motivate people, particularly young people to be interested in jazz, right? Yes, Why? absolutely. Because jazz is America's art form and we need to build new audiences for, for the music for years to come and it has to be done some kind of way. I coordinate a program that introduces young people to jazz through WBGO. What's it called? It's called the WBGO Children's Jazz Concert Series. And that's our way of introducing young people to jazz, hopefully so they will be the audience of tomorrow. Because as you know, the audience for jazz is getting less and less and less. It is? Yes. Why do you think that is? The minute left, why do you think that is? I think that's because of technology, because so many other forms of music are out there. It's just so much to entertain you. Uh, jazz mm. isn't in the schools that much. Uh, parents are younger and younger, so they aren't into jazz. So consequently, they can't teach their children about jazz. So someone has to do it. That's why we're glad you're doing it. That's why we're glad WBGO is doing it. And that's why we're glad you're partnering with our partners here at NJPAC. So do you mind if I plug one more time? Darthon Kirk. Newark's First Lady of Jazz, where people can find uh, Jazz 88.3 FM on the dial and on the internet? Yes. That's right. Absolutely. Yeah, uh, folks, that is the place to go. We are uh, at the New Jersey Performing Arts Center. This is one-on-one -on -one here at NJPAC. Uh, we are trying to promote art, culture, terrific people, music, and particularly jazz. The American art form, as Dorothy Ann talked about, we're not going to let it die. I want to no. thank you very much for joining us. You honor us one-on-one -on -one here at NJPAC. See you next time. Thank you, Darthan. One on One with Steve Adubato at NJPAC has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation, celebrating 25 years of broadcast excellence, and by the New Jersey Performing Arts Center, in cooperation with NJTV and 13 for WNET. Funding for this edition of One on One at NJPAC with Steve Adubato has been provided by the law firm of Gibbons PC. Barnabas Health, TD Bank, Verizon Communications, New Jersey Manufacturers Insurance Group, Josh S. Weston, and by NJ Best, New Jersey's 529 College Savings Plan. Promotional support provided by The Star Ledger and NJ.com. Transportation provided by Airbrook Limousine, serving the metropolitan New York, New Jersey area.